recording. Hello, ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, to part two of the vlog to finish. <laughs> I don't know if I'll get the chance to put up part one. Part one's basically uh, just kind of the start of this whole series and the start of me trying to finish a game. So what ended up happening is I ended up talking to Ruben and we did like more than three hours of recording. If you're not familiar with Ruben and you're new to the channel, I'll put a link to his stuff below. Definitely going to put a link to his stuff at the least. If not, uh, all the other links you can see my screen basically. Uh, hopefully you won't see my bank information. Bad joke. Anyway, so what has happened here is that in the next three, oh, 11 weeks, maybe 12, we'll see how this works. I am got intensive work training. And it's going to take up all my free time. This isn't work training at work. This is work training related to me. And the cool thing is because it is related to work, but it's not the program, the certificate that I complete with, I will be able to use for whatever reasons I want to use in the future. So that's great. However, that means that I am going to be cutting down to one video a week. This or minimum one video, maybe two videos a week. That's the plan. The videos are going to be basically Ruben's stuff, which I have to edit. I mean, 60, 70% of it is amazing stuff that I think is somewhere between intermediate and beginner, or sorry, beginner and intermediate, which is like one plus level where I'm at with a Godot. Uh, to be honest, I still have to go through all the, the Nathan stuff. I'm following, following so much behind on everything, but I'm still going at it, still trying to do my best to, uh, to commit and finish this thing. Thus... The vlog to finish. I'm going to try to be more positive, taking from Tim Ruswick's the vlog or vlog, whatever you want to call it, and say what you will about his games. He is an awesome dude at motivation stuff. So there it is. Uh, that being the case, I just kind of want to do this as this is part two of the the vlog to finish. And why am I kind of, you're probably going to see this first is because the first one's more of like a me talking about theory, talking more about starting the series. And this right here is me actually have jumped in. So I've actually, this is the sixth time I've done this video. I'm going to do a quick breakdown of Inkscape and how to use it for game development. So the thing here, or for Godot 3 development particularly. So what's happening right now is this head is actually from the last game jam we did. And I did recycle these bodies from another project, but the heads and stuff like that. Oh, where's your head? We were, we need as many character heads as we could. So this is why we did this. The reason why I run, uh, I don't know if I ever get to do the full thing on uh, Godot. I still want to do, not Godot, the whole uh, Ludum Dare breakdown. But we had it where these colors would help signify uh, to the uh, coders, programmers, to change different colors. Ended up grayscaling all of them. <laughs> and that's why her skin is white, but her hair is blonde which would be grayscaled anyway uh the reason why is you could do different skin pigments and tones on her skin which was pretty cool that was the game plan now the other thing to note too is is that i just want to show you the dudes the file size right here like this total size coming from this community uh the inkscape community awesome people there are a lot of people that have worked on pi game and other types of games with inkscape so you can see this link here if i don't post it in the video uh, and the thing is you can ask him advice and I did and they said this was what we came up with the idea of having a big giant uh, format here a thingamajiggy uh, and then putting all the characters and making sure they're in here now let me show you how that's set up I go to preferences I wait a while oh boy okay can I make this bigger yeah okay great uh, let's see input output selectors note tools is input output? No, I don't even know where it's at. I have no clue. Absolutely no clue. Still not 100% here. Yeah, it's it's somewhere. Where the, oh, tools preferences. File, ah, let me go to document properties better. And as you can see here, I actually have a background color of none. The reason why I like this is because it's easier on my eyes over a period of time. Like if you don't, that whiteness, gets to you. You can also go gray, which is another thing I was doing, but this seems to be the best. So I know exactly what is a object I can edit and what's not an object. The other thing is, this is my width. Uh, it shouldn't be in MM. It should be in pixels. Uh, hello, pixels. There you go. Pretty big and it's pretty large. Again, the reason why this is that large is so I can edit the files and I can uh, make them go down to 144 and then export these characters 
originally as they were animated. So there was a thing that happened in the Construct 2 community. Wow, this is truly a devlog. Uh, and that was about like, you know, how to simplify my process where I couldn't use any external plugins like Spryder Pro. So, because I couldn't use Spryder Pro, I took the painstaking process of actually animating these and it was a long time. It was a lot of time. In fact, that's the reason why I was not, I was kind of done with 2D and I was really thinking about 3D because using Blender and using 3D, I could just like render out a sprite sheet. Now, what has changed here is one of the, the features in Spriter Pro that never got there, unfortunately, they're a great development team, but they just never got around to it. Uh, and Games from Scratch covered this, but you also got it from the source. Here we go, the article is that they never, I never had a chance really to work with mesh deformation. In fact, some of the software out there, there's Dragon Bones, which is also free and open source, but there's no way to take that and move it into Godot. The other thing is, is like uh, all the other software that's out there that I could use would be like $300. And I'm glad, thank God I'm glad that I didn't spend $300 or $500 for that software. Uh, I am now going to use Godot to animate uh, the, the mesh deformation. Now, if you don't know what the mesh deformation does, this means that like you can make uh, the, you can make things move that are 2D. Moreover, this body right here in the center, oopsie, is going to be, let me get rid of her arm, front arm. The body in the center is going to be animated like this. So this, the, she could, she could breathe. Female characters could breathe, so forth and so on. All right, let's talk a little bit more. I know I'm jumping around, you apologize. Let's talk a little bit more about the like how the process is. So what I do is I, I broke out my old scanner. You could do this by phone as well, but the reason I use the scanner this time after I hand drew this object, or just object, after I hand drew this sketch, is that I like it to be flat and I can actually have measures. So when I drew this out, I had measures on the arms, so forth and so on, okay? Then the other thing after that is I kind of just put in, like body one was the first one, uh, what I'll do is I'll exit this and, okay, first I'll select it. I'll exit it and what you can see it's clear and there's an outline right here and I can get rid of rough and show you that. And this is basically what Inkscape literally does. Inkscape is an inking program if you think about it. So it's digital ink. I, I You probably don't come from a comics background like I did, but I get it. It means that you can draw something that's rough and then you ink over it. Let's make this reference a little lighter. I like it, but let's drop it down to 75 or 64. Why not? I'm a romantic. Nope, that's not it. It's not, okay. Why do I say romantic? I can't remember. There's something about that number 64 that was important at some point in my life. 64% something. All right, there you go. That's great. So let me save that, control S, and there you go. And let me fill this back in. Now this program can get a little fickled, like at least on my on my Windows 10 and my system, actually since Windows 8, it sometimes acts up. But again, this is free, open source, and very well supported. All right, so then I just, I kind of have a tendency to do a lot of layers. This actually for me is easier. So I put layers on things, on the body, at least the torso. Then what I'll do is I'll grab all this and then I'll make it one shape after I'm done with all these bodies. And then I can just like, you know, uh, use them so forth and so on. Now, ultimately, there is an issue related to this, and this this comes from character design, so it's something to note. So let me go here, and and I'm just I'm gonna throw this out here because I'm th gonna throw a Ruben this video. Ruben, as far as I'm concerned, man, you are my friend now, <laughs> like not just Facebook friend, with all the help you've given me and just support. So I don't know how to pay you for that. Given that, pay you back for that. Given that, if you yeah, can keep helping me, that's great. And out of our conversations, this came out of our friendly conversation. So that's where we're at right now. <laughs> Thanks to the conversations, Ruben. And again, I will be doing my best to edit those. It's like over two hours of, of content and splitting them up. And again, like 60% of it, 70% of it is really engaging for beginners to intermediate, like how to use layers. There's two types of layers, so forth and so on. But the other thing about it is, is that I know like 20 or 30% of it is just us talking about stuff. So I'll try to do my best to make that, curate that content to make make it worthy of your time. Uh, have you taken some time to look at this? Is a, this is one of the initial game docs I've, I've made. I'm using this idea I got from an algorithm book about behaviors and it's called Explore and Exploit. 
and an algorithm has the first part is to explore something to all its possibilities that you want that you need relative right and then to exploit means to use that knowledge so as this is idea is that this is going to be a type of adventure kid friendly horror in other words and i've actually uh there are going to be shooting elements but shooting it's it's not going to be a bullet hell because i love bullet hells no i don't i like bullet hells I, i'm not in love with them so i want to make it where you know basically you know where you're going what you're doing now given this uh looking at this body as you can see here it's more cartoonish it has smaller legs this is a lot better for the fake isometric perspective that the game's going to be so i i feel bad i didn't keep to these proportions in fact i'm gonna have to test it out in game and see how badly how bad this is another thing to note is that this head is closer to the body so in our in this finalized or closer to finalized version her neck is very long this looks great this might bite me on later on i might have to put that neck make it smaller and put her head down definitely need to put her head her head is huge this is a group yeah all right let's put that head down now okay that's much better yeah see that's there that's perfect now the, you're probably wondering why and the thing is because you're faking perspective and what i mean by you you are faking perspective is that in this one right here since the head is closer to the body it looks kind of like it's maybe an over top view and it's not and i know that this is a the per, misperspective a perspective is a style to these types of 2d games uh the genre of 2d game that i'm trying to play around with this one all right, we've got the shoot fire mechanics. One thing that really came out, and again, I'm linking this to the Kids Can Code guy. I'm probably the only guy who does a lot of references to other people's stuff. That's a side note. I do reference a lot of people's other stuff. But the Kids Can Code guy, he's got a great uh, tank thing. Actually, let me find that right now because I like to give credit where credit's due. Kids Can Code. Uh, okay, Kids Can Code guy. And so it's so funny about this is that i yeah i am funny i do reference people's stuff a lot but i want you guys to know oh he's on part five my god you look at his uh tank battles and basically this is what me and ruben figured out or you know ruben talking to me and i said this and he concurred this is actually a tank and what me this that means is that the way that this operates for the player and the controls is you're moving around a tank it just got legs and it's just at a different angle for stylistic reasons all right, let's look at the time at this bad boy. It's about 12 minutes. I think I got to call it then and there. Guys, so this is the plan. This is going to be the vlog to finish. I hope you've enjoyed it. hope you've learned some things about uh, this program, Inkscape. Uh, please check out the links hope, and put things together. Comments, like, subscribe, all that jazz. Again, I have to think about my family, which comes first, which I've been a, a real grumpy puss, very grumpy person because I've, been pushing myself too hard i need to pull back especially with an 11 week intensive training course related to my day job I'm not looking forward to that however it's gonna be fun i will complain about a little bit to remind myself so i can get through this uh to everyone who subscribed lovely people friends family random strangers fellow godot users fellow game jammers insert catchy phrase here and i will see you in the next one bye